Ian Lancaster Fleming was born into a wealthy banking family in 1908. He was an author, journalist, and naval intelligence officer for the British government. He helped to create the OSS, an intelligence organization which later became the CIA. From his personal life and interactions with family and friends, Fleming created his famous fictional spy character, James Bond. My name is Bond. 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 James, James Bond. Bond. This successful movie series has been wooing audiences to the screen for over 50 years. Excitement runs high in Bond films featuring fast cars, attractive women, chases, insidious villains, and plots that keep you on the edge of your seat. No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die! We may enjoy viewing the danger and excitement, but the judgment center of our brain never stops to ask if what we are viewing is right. Would this be a character that we classify as a good role model? Even actor Daniel Craig, who has played the role four times, told Time Magazine that Bond was not a role model for men. Let's take a look at many of the elements of the James Bond movies and see just what this series promotes. Bond was married once for a day. He lost his wife, Tracy. But from early on in the series, we find that Bond has an infatuation with women of all kinds, even those that are villainous. He found love once, but the only woman he ever loved was killed. Bitter, he falls into the arms of other women looking for love. Many are married, so Bond commits adultery. Perhaps this is a reflection of Fleming's own life, as he was married, divorced, and had several affairs. This is a clear contradiction to the Bible which says, you shall not commit adultery. The Bible views adultery in a very serious light because it is how the Lord describes what his own people Israel did in their relationship with him. In the book of Hosea, the Lord tells his prophet to marry an unfaithful woman as a living example of what Israel has done to God. But an even greater principle is at stake as taught by Jesus. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. As we watch these films, countless men and women are being tempted to covet momentary relationships with people on screen, damaging the mental and physical relationship they have with their spouse. James Bond is a heavy drinker, as was his creator. The heavy product placement deals makes this obvious. Heineken inked a deal for $45 million to make sure their brand has been featured in the latest films. Yet what may not be evident is the actual alcohol consumption. According to an article published in the British Medical Journal, after exclusion of days when Bond was unable to drink, his weekly alcohol consumption was 92 units a week, over four times the recommended amount. They also said that James Bond's level of alcohol intake puts him at a high risk of multiple alcohol-related diseases and an early death. While this behavior poses a risk to a fictional character, the truth is it poses an even greater risk to those who are watching and glamorizing it. It gives the impression that no matter how much you drink, there are no side effects. The message being sent to countless lives is that you can perform all aspects of life at peak level, regardless of how much alcohol you consume. James Bond's famous phrase, shaken, not stirred, describes how he likes his vodka martini. Vodka is a Russian word that means little water. One of the primary ingredients in a martini is a vermouth. It comes from the French word vermouth, which comes from the German word vermouth, meaning wormwood. In Revelation 8.11, wormwood is used to represent how the truth of God's word has been corrupted in history. Is it a coincidence that alcohol is also referred to as spirits? Spirits are also volatile liquids that are liable to change rapidly and unpredictably, especially for the worse. So what kind of spirit is being manifested in Bond's behavior? Is it one of holiness or a spirit of bitterness and grief that makes him change for the worse? Almost every Bond film finds the international spy in a casino. While he doesn't always gamble, there are times the stakes are high, like in Casino Royale. Casino Royale can be translated to Royal House. All gambling is based on odds, and the odds are never even, hence the term the house always wins. The large casinos in Las Vegas are not being built because they are going broke, but rather those who visit them. While Bond always seems to win, the truth is most do not. The system of chance is one that subtly plants a seed indicating there is no design or plan. You simply do the best with the hand you are dealt. 
There are no such concepts in the Bible, aside from the waste of money. Our lives are not random occurrences swayed by chance encounters here and there. We are created beings. God has a plan for our lives. And though our human family fell into the trap of sin long ago, God does not risk our lives, but rather His. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Your best odds may be red or black on the roulette table of a casino, but God has a royal house called the sanctuary in heaven. In the most holy place, he pleads his red blood because of the black sin in our lives. Scripture offers us the best assurance. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In that deal, you can't lose. While the government may issue a license to kill, God does not. The last two men to play Bond have racked up a body count as many as all that came before them. The Bible declares, you shall not murder. There's no sugar in the scenario. As exciting as Bond may appear, he's a professional assassin. I have a question. Well, what's that? Why, given every other possible option, does a man choose the life of a paid assassin? Well, it was that or the priesthood. Put yourself in those shoes. Kill or be killed? It's not a position many would want to be placed in, especially frequently. Could you pull the trigger? It changes people. War veterans are a powerful example of this. Some are haunted the rest of their lives. The glamour of the role on screen quickly fades when reality sets in and you realize what it would be like to be in that situation. Sure, it might be a bad guy he's going after, but God has not called us to be the judge. That's his job. The Bible is clear, beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Jesus taught us to not even be angry with our brother. He said, you have heard that it was said of those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother, without a cause, shall be in danger of the judgment. The subtle undertone that threads its way into the Bond franchise is the theme of rebellion. I will not tolerate insubordination, 007. James is a maverick. Time after time, he's called on by his superiors to do a job a certain way. I'll recall W8 from Hong Kong. He can do it. He follows orders, not instincts. But as the story progresses, Bond takes a gamble and does things his way. You shot him at point blank and threw him off a roof. I'd hardly call that showing restraint. Most of the time, this works out in his favor. While it appears to keep him alive, it doesn't give him the highest ranking. His 007 designation places him on a scale of agents. The higher the number, the better you are. In the Bible, the number 7 is symbolic of completeness or perfection. Yet James Bond typifies a rebellious character to authority. You kidnapping me? That would be one way of looking at it. Something more in line with God's enemies than his followers. The Bible says for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. Again, we have to ask ourselves, is this the type of behavior and character we really want to take on and portray to the world around us? If we take this story and look at it from the perspective of the writer, many things become clear. Ian Fleming stated that Bond was Manichaean. Manichaeism is a mixture of Christianity, Gnosticism, and Paganism, based on the conflict of light and darkness. Living in the shadow of his brother and deceased father, Fleming never quite measured up to the family name. His darkness expressed its hero of light on paper in the form of James Bond. Bond was educated in Calvinist schools, which teach predestination. Perhaps this is why Bond is able to go about his business without remorse. Because those who meet a violent demise were receiving their just reward, and he was simply dealing out the justice from above. Where did he get these types of ideas for his fictional spy? Fleming read from many authors and had a wide variety of friends, including Aleister Crowley, whom the popular press of the day deemed the most evil man to ever live. Many experts agree that the character Le Chiffre from Casino Royale was molded after Crowley. Fascinated with numerology and astrology, Fleming worked various aspects of the esoteric and the occult into his thrilling series. If you want to understand a literary work or film, you have to know what's driving the man or woman who created it. Fleming lived a life drowned in broken relationships, alcoholism, and vices, smoking as many as 70 cigarettes per day. Take a step back and ask yourself, is this really the life you see yourself living as you place yourself in the shoes of Bond? Are you a victim of the Bond effect? And there's a reason advertisers so heavily subsidize these films, because if Bond uses it, people buy it. 
So is it possible that through a movie, you're participating in his same behavior vicariously? Disregarding the clear words of scripture places us on dangerous ground. Participating in these activities would only make us slaves to sin, so why even dwell on them through a movie? The Bible says, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Don't be a slave to sin, whether in reality or living through the eyes of another. Christ offers freedom from bondage. He offers us a cleansed and eternal life. Instead of watching these things, as the old hymn says, turn your eyes upon Jesus, and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace.